Hello, welcome to class session 8. In this session, we're going to review the midterm exam. If you've already done the midterm exam, you will now see my solution for it. We begin by looking at the structure of my solution for the midterm exam. For this midterm assignment, you constructed a neural network that predicts what type of trees would be covering land based on several input parameters. This is using real-world data that was provided by the United States Forestry Service. For the midterm, I wanted to give you real-world data and see how a real neural network is constructed. For the scope of the midterm, we did not necessarily predict the forest cover with necessarily that high of a degree of accuracy. With several days of researching it, I was able to get it to about 60 to 70 percent accuracy. This data has been the subject of PhD theses and quite a bit of research. In the scope of the midterm, the 60 to 70 percent accuracy rate is actually pretty good and completely acceptable for this assignment. The U.S. Forestry Service provided quite a few input variables for predicting the cover type for this data set. Among these variables included the location of surface water to the area. Sources of underground water were also considered, as well as forest fires that had happened recently near the area. Topology of the land nearby was considered as well, as well as soil types and the location of nearby roads. From this input data, you are provided the type of tree that is already resident on this land. This should allow the neural network to make predictions about what type of tree is on the land if the type of tree is not known. Tree types such as the spruce and fir, the lodgepole pine, the ponderosa pine, cottonwoods and willows, aspen trees, Douglas fir, as well as crumwalds are all provided in this study. Let's look at what inputs I decided to use. Over the couple of days that I researched this particular data set, I found that this selection of inputs gave me the best chance of predicting the output. Now there's other inputs that I decided not to use such as proximity of recent forest fires and it could be that these inputs would have given a better result if I had found a way to work them into the neural network in such a way that they were beneficial to it. However this was giving me a a rate in the 60 to 70 percent range in terms of prediction and that was acceptable for what I was looking for. Here you can see the inputs that I use. For each of these inputs, the way I produce a number that the neural network can actually use is I take the range. So I analyze first and I find, say for example, elevation. I find the minimum elevation that there is and I find the maximum elevation that there is. And the way I report elevation to the neural network is I take the percentage of how deep into that range the actual sampled elevation was. I do a similar min and max and find the percentage for each of these values. This allows the neural network to accept values between 0 and 1. The output from the neural network is relatively simple. There are seven different types of trees that the US Forestry Service provided data for, so I have one output neuron for each of these tree types. In the training data, if the tree was present on that land, I put a 1 into the output. If the tree was not present, I put a 0. So all of the data, both input and output, is between the range of 0 and 1. This means that we can use the default sigmoid type activation function with this feedforward neural network. I created a configuration class that contains several constants that the program needs to determine its operation. This allowed me to quickly change these options and try out various scenarios so that I could figure out which numbers are going to give me the best results. The hidden layers 1 and 2 define how many neurons in each of the hidden layers. 
I specified zero for hidden layer two and therefore do not have a second hidden layer. This neural network is operating on a single hidden layer. When we learn more about pruning, you'll see how to analyze and see if a second hidden layer will actually be useful. I used a learning rate of 1 100th of a percent, which seemed to be about the highest that I could make the learning rate and have the neural network still learn. A momentum of 30% seemed to eliminate much problems as far as local minima were concerned. The training seemed to progress nicely. True and false are the values that I use for each of the trees. So if a tree is present, its output neuron is going to be 1.0, true. If the tree is not present, its output neuron is going to be 0, 0.0, which is false. I also specify the number of training epochs that I have. Training epochs are how many iterations the training is going to go through. 5,000 usually got the error rate down to around 10%, which worked reasonably well. It would take considerably more to get it to higher, to uh, better error rates than the 10% that 5,000 seems to get it to. And then cover samples, that's how we want the same number of each tree in the data. So we look for 1,000 samples of each tree. This results in 7,000 total samples that the neural network is training on. There's a lot more than that. We use the additional ones to verify. There are many different ways that you can construct this program. These are the classes that I divided it up into. I used a total of six classes. None of these classes are terribly long, and breaking it into these individual classes allows me to better organize the program. The Analyze class is used to analyze the data before I actually process it. This establishes all the minimum and maximum values for the inputs that I care about. Using the input as a percentage, I need to calculate the minimum and maximum. For example, if the altitude for a given sample is halfway between the min and the max, I can represent it as 50%. The config class we just looked at, that contains all of the configuration items that I might want to change as the application, as I am trying out the application and fine tuning it. The convert class is used to take one row from the file and convert it into an input array that I would actually send off to the neural network. This is used for both training and evaluation. So it's used by the evaluate class when I am evaluating the performance of this neural network. It is also used by the train class when I am actually training the neural network. The evaluate class is used after the neural network has been trained. We train the neural network with just a subset of the overall data. The evaluate class is used to run all of the data against the neural network and see how well it performs. The midterm class has the actual main method and it is used to basically run these classes in order. First we analyze, then we train, then we evaluate what we've trained and we see how well the neural network is performing. This is one of the tricks to neural network programming. You must break your data into training sets, but you can't use it all to train. You need to keep some back for evaluation, otherwise you have no idea if the neural network is learning to perform against data that it has not been trained with. You will not have every piece of data available in the world to train the neural network with, so you need to train it on just a subset and analyze its performance. The train class provides a backpropagation training algorithm that runs through the number of iterations specified in the config class. This was an overview of the design of the program. The complete program can be downloaded from the URL that you see here. This concludes class session eight. In class session nine, you will learn how to prune a neural network. This allows you to remove neurons that are not producing too much in their way of a contribution to the solution. This makes the neural network more simple and quick to execute. We hope you will continue with class session 9. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.